Welcome to Dumquat. So this is, uh, you, you know Don Jr.'s popularity is collapsing when Eric is getting more of the defense gigs. Chris, happy birthday. It's your 50th. That's a good one. My 55th is this year, and this is a big year for me. 55 is very big. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying that three psychics and a witch have all told me that my 55th year is, is the shit. When I turn 55, that's when things kick off again because like everything goes in cycles. I'm not saying that. I'm just reiterating it. Um, but yeah, so 50, 50's great. I'm a big fan. That was, that was great. I'm still in Project 50, although it's Project 50s now. Um, yeah, good stuff. All right. So, all right, Eric, uh, the, this is a, I've seen this headline, this right here. The media is absolutely petrified. I've seen this and I think CSL has seen this on like Seven different clips. Like, this is a talking point they workshopped. The media is petrified. I guess that they have to deal with Donald Trump or that Donald Trump's going to be the guy or that he's going to give him what for or some bullshit. Um, I mean, I think, on the one hand, there are a lot of women in media and there are a lot of men who respect women in media. That might surprise you, but it's true. And uh, those folks, in general, uh, don't like the idea of having to talk about a, 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 a sexual pig like Donald Trump all the time. Yeah. Yeah. CSL, isn't it? It's just like, it's this weird recurring theme. It's also lame and stupid, but it's one of those things like they're quaking in their boots. Also, they need me for the fucking ratings. Mm-hmm. Here with reaction from the Trump Organization. Eric Trump is with us. Oh, uh, Sean's still hanging out with Trump. He's still wearing that uh, circus peanut orange base. You know, there there hasn't been. Well, first of all, in Iowa, there was never. There's never been a person that won by a larger margin than <laughs> with a lower turnout. Dude, don't fucking brag on percentages when you shit the bed. Half the Republicans are against him, and a and. That includes everybody who stayed home. Either they stayed home because they were like, fuck it, I don't care. Or I'm for somebody else, but they're not going to win. So fuck it, I don't care. You done, son. Then uh, Bob Dole, which was 1988, and that margin, I think it was 12.8%. Right, because there were a lot of people running and there was a sensible Republican Party in theory at that time. And there, and... They were primarying their own fucking guy. That was during Reagan. Or sorry, that was during Reagan into Bush. That was 88, right? Is that what he said? 88? Uh, Bob Dole, which was 1988. And that yeah, so they that was when they were, like the vice president was going to roll into and they were doing this whole like 16 years, right? We're going to roll on for 16 years, eight years of Reagan and eight years of Bush. And, and a bunch of these motherfuckers were like, no, 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 no. It's my turn. So they started elbowing him out of the way. Margin, I think it was 12.8%. Your father won by, by 30 points in Iowa. Right. Uh, do, do I really want to go? Do we really have to go and look out and look at the fucking vote turnout at the Iowa caucuses in 1988? Do we really? Do you want to see how many more people came out for all these different fucking folks? Trump got 5,000 more people after already being president for four fucking years. He got 5,000 more people than Ted Cruz did in 2016. Your father comes back and, and does something that hasn't been done since 1976. He wins Iowa. Then shit himself on live television. Anybody? I mean, what is it? What's the what was the big thing that he hasn't they haven't done since since basically nobody wanted to have anything to do with the Republican Party because of Nixon? You mean are you going back to that? goes on to win New Hampshire and he wins it by double digits. I agree. I'm a dope in a state, frankly, whose system 
of voting in primaries I don't like. I don't like open primaries. Republicans should elect Republican candidates, in my view. Democrats should elect Democratic candidates. Yeah, you don't give a fuck when the rat fucking goes the other way. Hey, you, you know why? Uh, hey, hey, Sean, come here. First of all, um, people have been rat fucking both directions on the in the New Hampshire primary for a long time, long time. Um, and uh, be, like, again, re- switching parties or or not listing a party affiliation, that kind of stuff for a long time. You know why none of the Trump people tried to like go the other way and give Dean Phillips a lift, even though he showed up at a fucking Trump rally trying to get some people to do just like, uh, do just that. Like, hey, your guy's going to win anyways. So come over to my side and help me get an, you know, a ridiculous number of votes that I didn't earn and try to, you know, at- as an attack on Joe Biden. He literally went there and tried to get that, right? You know why they didn't? Because believe me, he, dude hired Roger Stone. You don't think he's... You you think somehow he's above the idea of rat fucking in the in the New Hampshire primary? No. You know why they didn't do it? Because they couldn't afford to lose anybody. They were they they were too afraid. They were like, "What happens? What if Nikki Haley wins?" And I and I went over and did that. I was rat fucking over there trying to mess with the Democrats, and then she fucking beats Trump. They couldn't afford to. Yeah, that's, it's a little sad when Trump's on such shaky ground, these assholes can't even rat fuck like they used to. And by the way, I didn't make up that term. Um, that's been around for a long time. Rat fucking is, a, is you know, is sort of um, like two, it, it, like I guess there's two primary um, ways of looking at it. One is in that cross vote in open primaries and that kind of stuff in, intentionally um, voting across the aisle to try and mess with them because you feel like, okay, we're secure, so let's go throw the vote around on the other side in these open primaries and the like. Or, um, you know, ordering tons of pizzas to a to a campaign headquarters and then they, you know, they, you know, used to be back in the day, they, you'd owe money for all the pizzas and you're like, oh, I think somebody... Uh, I think somebody ordered all these pizzas for the volunteers. They'd pay for them and they didn't have enough money to do their printing for that week because they got fucking, they would do it again and again and again. Right. Yeah. The Nixon's plumbers definitely was a giant rat fucking uh, exercise. The probably the most egregious American on American version. I mean, like you can argue that, um, you know, Russia is just the Russian word for rat fucking these days. So. You can't deny these are historic results for your father. Yeah, you can. Just look at the actual numbers versus the percentages and recognize that percentages can be indicative of a lot of different things. If if cases of spontaneous combustion worldwide are up... uh, A thousand percent. Um, and, and there, and people go, oh my God, how many were that? Like, well, they had one suspected case last year. So we have 10 suspected cases this year. Yeah. 10, 10, we had 10, but we don't, uh, 10, one suspected case and then 10 more suspected, nine more suspected cases. So 10, 10. There's no question about that, Sean. Frankly, that's exactly what. Yeah, there is. There's a lot of questions. Um, why the mainstream media is so petrified of him. It's why they go on and, you know, do the clips that you just showed right there. They're petrified of him. <laughs> oh, they, they play the clips of him saying Nikki Haley 20 times. That You mean Sean just played that in front of you right before you came on? I got to say, I'm beginning to think they don't really like you, Eric. He won the largest margin ever. Ma- mar- statistical margin. How about turnout? How many? How many people? He got. He got ten percent. Yeah, he, he got. Was it? Yeah, yeah. If I percent more than ten crews, yeah. Because I, I look at it, it was like fifty six thousand something for any primary in Iowa. As you just said, the largest margin ever in New Hampshire. 
He, he received yesterday, he received the most votes in a primary ever in the history of New Hampshire. And by the way, he's beating Biden in every single national poll. No. Many of them by 10, 11, 12. No. Some 15%. No. The media is absolutely petrified. Not really. I got to say, I'm uh, not uh, not petrified at all. I mean, I understand. Look, I understand everybody blowing past the story that he purchased a poll for one point five million dollars with his campaign. And he's doing what's effectively push polling at this point to try and edge out Nikki Haley because that's the, they looked at the real internals and they're kind of fucked. Yeah. <laughs> Biden won New Hampshire by 65 percent and Trump won it by what, 12 percent? Was it ultimately 12? Like he just cleared uh the you know single digits my guy my father is the greatest guy in the world he won mm. hey i'm glad hey it's terrific when any son thinks that i don't believe you <laughs> he wants strong borders he wants a great economy well then why did he just leave us alone or and why did he just talk the republicans out of voting for the border bill he wants a strong military he doesn't <laughs> Just for Vladimir Putin. I mean, he didn't say where. I, I give him credit. You, you know, I'm, I would assume, and you would assume, of course, that uh, when he says he wants a strong military, you're talking about the U.S. military. And I don't know. I don't take that for granted. He wants to see this country go into World War III. He's sick and tired of the... Na World War III. The games. He's sick and tired of the nonsense. And all, the, all of the nonsense? He's sick and tired of the nonsense? Is he... S Wait a minute. Is this breaking news? Eric Trump. Hashtag. Donald Trump is sick. Also tired. Film at 11. Also. Ah! Hold on. Mm. I, I apologize. I should have warned you. Oh. That's not, that's not good. Um, beware of Wawa 3. And uh, there you go. Oh, God. I think the enthusiasm, Sean, that we're seeing all over the place, these massive turnouts is... is these massive turnouts? You mean the half-filled gymnasium? The American people who want our country back. They're, they're tired of the worst president in the history of this country. By far, hands down, it's not even close. <laughs> okay. They want a strong guy back in the... Yes, yeah, they want a strong guy. A, a strong guy who knows who Nancy Pelosi the is. The White that House, and that's exactly what my father will do, and... That's exactly who my father is. Well, I'm glad as you, as his son, you know who he is. That's uh, some sons can't say that. You know, you you look at, for example, the media. Uh, this is now two pri well, one caucus, one primary in. And here you got Joe Biden. He, he lies and says the border's secure and the border's closed. That's not true. It's never been true since he's been president. Uh, we can see it with our own eyes. He no, you can't. Here's a good idea, Sean. You're on every fucking night. Talk to somebody at Customs and Border Patrol and have them post a fucking local, find a local Fox affiliate, dole out some fucking cash from your what, $30 million a year salary and have somebody stand down there with a camera uh, every day, every whatever, during just during the hour of your show. Just send an affiliate down there. We're on Border Watch. Pick the worst crossing point. Oh, look, all oh, my signs came up. That's funny. Did I click on the wrong one? Oops, sorry. Go, go up there. <laughs> go, go send somebody down there to, uh, that you can cut to. Here's a live feed of the fucking border. Pick the worst fucking spot. Do it. Every day. Don't, don't show singular compilations or one shots of where a particular group came across that are being processed. People that aren't like, I want to see if Mr. Fucking Open Borders, I want to see people just fucking scattering and CBP guys going, fuck, they're getting away like all, t all day, all night. Cause that's what, that's what an open board or, or just sitting there not doing fucking anything, I guess. Right. Is that, is that the argument that Customs and Border Patrol is just letting people in? Brags about Bidenomics. 60% of Americans now live paycheck to paycheck. No, they don't. 60% of Americans do not now live paycheck to paycheck. First of all, Republicans making over $200,000 a year now say that they feel like they're working paycheck to paycheck. That does not mean they are working paycheck to paycheck. 
It means they don't like Joe Biden and they won't say they feel great about the economy until Trump gets back in, even though it's going to cost them money. Secondly, Marianne Williamson recently brought up this 65% of Americans don't have $500 for an emergency. Never mind the fact that the original quote, if you'll recall, for a long time, the story was $400 for an emergency. Now the emergency has to cost them $500 before they have to call mom, borrow some money, or put it on a credit card. The other thing is, is that the company that does that study, the company that puts out that say that most Americans, 65% of Americans cannot handle a $500 emergency uh, you know, you know the company that does that. You know what they do for a living? They do polls, Hal. Of course they do. They, they, they're a focus group, right? That's that. That's what they do. They, they, you know, they, they just ask people questions, and they don't sell anything. They're just there. You know what? You know what that company actually does? Where he got that statistic, and where Marianne Williamson quoted it, because I saw it in the fucking article she was referencing. You know what they sell? They sell emergency savings accounts to giant companies to provide for their employees to sock away a portion of their uh, of your employees money in a savings account on their behalf that's what they do that company that that tells that story that most Americans 65% of Americans according to them can't afford a $500 emergency sells emergency savings accounts to giant corporations that that the company on your behalf takes 10 bucks out of your fucking makes it mandatory puts 10 bucks out of your fucking like hourly wage every week or every day or whatever however it's arranged into an account so they can sit on it and that company and the company you work for make interest on it I'm not kidding yeah, it's not, it's like a 401k, but in cash. It's a liquid 401k. Now, what do you think happens when a giant company has, uh, signs a contract with this company that's telling them that most of your employees cannot afford a $500 emergency without borrowing from a friend, putting it on a credit card, dipping into savings, all that kind of shit. Like there's like, basically they're like, they have to have it in their pocket right now. You have 500 bucks on you right now. If there was an emergency, no, I'd have to go get it out of savings or something. Okay. Well then you can't. That, that literally that's the qualification, not you don't have it and it's nowhere to be found, honestly. So the, what they, these guys want to do is sell this to a company the size of Target, Amazon or whatever. What do you think happens to $500 for every employee mandatory maintained in this savings account that you can draw out? But if you draw out the 500 bucks, it, they start refilling it with your paycheck again afterwards, right? What do you think happens? They loan that money out. They gain interest on it just sitting there. The company keeps the interest for maintaining this and fees and all that other shit. And then they they become an like an accidental bank holding $500 for every employee across a swath of industries. It's a fucking scam. Uh, like the fact that like the, and that's the root of that story. That's the that's where that statistic came from. I hear it quoted all the fucking time. And you can deal with the fact that people need money. I, exactly, Peter. <laughs> Apparently, for forty percent of Americans, thirty five percent of Americans have five hundred bucks on them at any given time. Or a, or a debit card they can immediately take, they, they can take out more than, you know, $400 on at any given time. That's the difference. 40, you know, 35% would do it comfortably. Right. If you can borrow 500, they consider that you not being able to handle it. Even if you choose to borrow it, even if you're like, well, I have the cash, but I could put it on a credit card and pay it off right now. If you do that, that means... You're one of the 65% that cannot handle a $500 emergency, which is patently false. Right? And there's a difference. Yeah, Kiana, that's what they're arguing is that, you know, that people spend too much. So they sell this statistic to corporations and, and try to get the corporations to act on your behalf. That's it.
Uh, he lies. You know, I never once spoke to my, my son, my brother or anybody about their foreign business deals. And he's up to his eyeballs in it. Nope. Bring up a piece of paper. Where where does anybody that they've had as a witness say he's talked to uh, his son about his foreign business deals? Where's that testimony? Saying hi to somebody's fucking partner or something is not being up to your eyeballs in this. If your son is a, dr uh, a recovering drug addict, you bet your fucking ass I'm going to know who's hanging around him. That's the other thing, too. For, uh, ne never mind the fact, if you've heard the, the voicemail where, you know, Biden was worried about uh, Hunter, never mind just a, a dad or a, a parent dealing with a child with an addiction and everybody dropping dead from fucking uh, fentanyl and all that kind of shit. Like the, the fear that any parent who's got a child who's an addict or a regular user right now is it's terrifying because they, they may have a maintenance dose. They may be sort of a conscientious user, but they get the wrong pill or get sold something they think is something else. They could die. It's really fucking scary. You may not get a chance to say goodbye to him. And imagine they manage, they get over that hump. They manage to get out of it. They're not using it anymore. They're in, they're in NA or AA or both, right? And you're like, oh, fucking hang in there. Fucking hang, don't. Because people, sometimes the worst is when they fall off the wagon and they go get you know, whatever's available nearby and it's not their regular dealer and all that kind of shit. That's how, that's how Philip Seymour Hoffman died. It's, it's fucking horrible. Um, you don't think as a parent with, with one, you lost one child to brain cancer and your other kid was an addict. You don't think you're going to know who's hanging around him? It's, dude, I got to say, it's probably a violation of the law. But if, I was vice president or even a senator. I'd probably tap somebody on the shoulder at the FBI and go, hey, man, this dude's hanging around my son. He's running his fucking tags for me. Who the fuck is this guy? I don't want to scare my son off and make him, you know, not responsive because he's an addict and it worries me. For what time? <laughs> Cancel. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why. You don't have any alarms. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why she wanted to talk to me. I guess something I said sounded like that. Um, yeah, you you goddamn right I would. I, I'd probably get in trouble for that. This is going to come back to haunt me when I run for office. You, you fucking ain't right. I'm going to know the name of everyone around. It doesn't mean I want to do business with him. It doesn't mean I want to interject myself in his friendships or his relationships. But you fucking ain't right. I'm going to know. Yeah, the deep state is following me. She's part of the deep state. I don't want to say her name again because she will wake up. Uh, there we go. Yeah, Biden lost his infant daughter and his first wife. Their Hunter's mother and his sister. And then he lost his, uh, his brother. Like, fucking hell, man. I, I would almost think it would be like parental malpractice. To, if you've had a son that's been through that kind of shit, to not keep an eye on who's around him. I mean, especially if you're in office, then this might be the dude who gives your son the dose that kills him. The fuck out of here. I, I would almost as if, like, I don't need to know your business. I don't know what, I don't, as a matter of fact, I can't. But who's there? Him, 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 him. Okay, cool. Let me write all those fucking names down. Okay, see you later. I don't need to look until I need to look. Right? That sounds pretty logical. And and chat room, let me know. Chat room, please. People in the chat room, let me know. If you had a child who was an addict and they managed to get out of it, wouldn't you be more than normally, you'd normally be curious about who they were hanging out with while they were trying not to fall off the wagon? For real. All Joe Biden, Hunter Biden story aside, you as a human being, Jesus, you goddamn right. Holy fuck. Like, I, you know, 
as a parent, there's a certain thing. Look, I think, I think a lot of parents are rough on their teenagers because they white knuckle the tender years. They're so worried about the child being hurt or dying or falling off of something or breaking something or eating the wrong thing or, you know, for all that shit. Like, as a, you know, my son's 12 and I fucking, I'm still, I don't know when that ever goes away. Maybe it never does, but I still white knuckle his existence most of the time. And it's subtle and it moves maybe to the back of your psyche because you couldn't operate if you always did it. But as a parent, I'm sorry, Alvin. Um, my God, right? It's always there. It never goes away. I thought so, Hinda. And I, I, honest to God, I wouldn't expect it to, nor would I want it to particularly. I think at some point I, you know, and not for reasons that I worry about my son doing stuff, but that the world is a big messy place, right? And imagine you lost your daughter and then one of your sons and, and, you know, your your wife, their mother, and one of their sons, and you only have one adult child left. And he is using drugs at a time when the biggest story you hear is they were just doing this, they do this all the time, and, and then they got the wrong thing from their dealer or somebody else, and then they died. That's all you hear. I mean, the last fucking, like, I'd say 12 years especially as fentanyl has grown, Oof. So, uh, no, it, 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 yeah. Oh, thanks, Palm Bird. I appreciate that. And congratulations for being 30 years sober. I am, for those that don't know, I am whatever my age, month, and day is right now. Um, I am entirely that sober. I have never had a drink. I have never done drugs. I am never going to. Um, but I have lost friends to drugs. I have lost friends to, you know, to alcohol and it just like every time that, that groove in that record gets fucking deeper every time. And, and all I can hope is that by the, you know, that I can kind of stiff arm um, and as much of life away from my son as I possibly can. And the idea, you know, he's got a half sister, like I, I, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not in her life, but I, I'm aware of her so much that even the heartbreak he would go through, I'm protective of her. Right. So the, so the idea that like he, he was up to his eyeballs in his son's business, like fucking, if my son was a recovering addict, I'd be up to his, my fucking eyeballs in his goddamn business too. It wouldn't be because I'm in business with him. No parent has $500 to spare. I'll, uh, uh, uh I'll agree to that. <laughs> Cause it's a, if you got a kid, you, you, you're going to need it at some point. So, anyways, back to our uh, the ridiculousness and of yet whatever here we have whatever passes for this fucking situation. A caucus and a primary. Your dad's giving a speech, a victory speech, and fake news. CNN wants to fact check him in real time. MSDNC wants to do the same. After and you guys ran it without interruption. So they were excoriated for not even taking a single word of your father's speech. That's NBC News now. Um, uh, what is your reaction to that part of it? Because we took your dad's speech. Uh, it was in my hour in this hour and, and we ran the whole thing. So people, well, that's cause you were just vaping in the background. <laughs> yeah. How much money did you make for this show on that? Good Lord. I'm dead serious. I, I, I hold on. How much does, you know, let's see. Let me, just, let me introduce this guy. Yeah, I'm 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 shocked that uh there we go. Hold on. Oh, quit it. Um yeah, Sean, so here's uh if I may. Um well here I'll 
grab this down here, bring it over to here. You think you find it? Uh, I I don't find it weird that Sean Hannity would in any opportunity any opportunity he has on his show to just coast through a night of programming and let it run. Of course he's gonna fucking do it. Why wouldn't he? He's worth a quarter of a billion dollars. He makes forty five million dollars a year. You think this motherfucker knows like is a like is a man of the fucking people? Good lord. So, uh, it earns an estimated $45 million at the broadcast network and has an estimated net worth of $250 million. As of 2022, he was making forty five dollars a year. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, Sean Hannity's the highest paid guy there because he's been there the longest. Um, forty-five million. Uh, net worth two fifty. Annual salary forty-five. Laura Ingram makes fifteen million dollars a year. She's next in line. Oh, she's uh, she, oh yeah, he's the richest. Then she's next. She's worth forty million. Neil Cavuto makes seven. Jesus Christ. Can Maria Bartiromo make rent? He's worth twenty five million. He makes a, he makes a lot less than she does, and he's worth more. That's a, that's what happens when you're on Fox Business. That's a little bit of insider trading. Gutfeld makes seven million a year. He's worth eighteen. Jesse Waters makes five. By the way, this list is all cattywampus because Tucker is you know is a never has to work a day in his fucking life. Janine make Judge Janine makes three million a year. She's worth fourteen. Bill Hemmer makes three. Shannon Bream, look at that. Equity and pay. They both are on the same show, basically, and they both make three. That's the standard pay for that hour. Uh, Perino makes a million dollars a year. She's new. Yeah, just regular folk, exactly, CSL. Will Kane makes 500K. He's worth 1.5. Nothing to sneeze at. Probably, what, the cost of his house? He's Fox, he's Fox Friend Weekend. These are the top paid people there. I guess. Laura Ingraham and uh, Greg's making, you know, he does two shows though. Waters only does one, right? And he'll he'll sometimes guess, but the, the five is always Greg. And then he's also got Gutfeld, which he does two shows on. So that's how they're spreading the money around. That's how they do it. They, they don't want to pay who you're working with. Um, that's what Fox Nation is for. So they shovel money. The you know if they don't if they want to raise if he gets grisly and that is like raise my pay and they're like if we raise your pay everybody else gets something. So instead of raising your pay for your show, we'll keep it the same and then we'll give you this no show gig bullshit voiceover thing you'll do on Fox Nation and we'll feed you two million dollars a week on top of that deal and that's how it works. And then these guys they can't say he got a raise I want to raise they can just go. He got another show on there, and they're like, what would that show be? Well, we'll, we'll push it around. We'll see what we come up with. And then they never actually, uh, you know, get around to it. It's it, it's it's a standard kind of business thing for when they've got... You see this on uh, on uh, TV casts. Don't ask me how I know that. True. People can decide for themselves. Uh, what's your reaction to how they handle this? One day, uh, Americans will have the internet, and they can watch whatever the fuck they want. Um, they may think they're tuning in to hear uh, Rachel Maddow's take on the, the you know, and Steve Hornacki read off the numbers and all that kind of stuff, but they're really there just to go live to Trump whenever the fuck he wants to talk. Well, Sean, does that shock anybody? I mean, they've been censoring my father since, you know, the minute he went down the... They didn't censor you. Motherfucker, you don't have a right to a microphone. You whingy little turd. What the fuck? That's not censorship. It's their network. He's threatened to shut these networks down. That's censorship. No wonder they don't want to show him. Get the fuck out of here. Believe me, if he says that shit about shutting them down, they'll show that part. How about that? Escalator. Anything they put out, he would censor, right? Any, any, all his press. Say that again, Eric. I, I think you, you anybody knows how uh, Eric uh, is a chip off the old block and may have just, uh, 
had a Freudian slip. Went down the escalator. Anything they put out, he would censor, right? And other since, you know, the minute he went down the escalator. Anything they put out, he would censor, right? And <laughs> Eric, you're doing great, pal. Excellent work. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Just excellent. <laughs> excellent. Yes. What, what was that again? Everything they would put out, he would censor. When he was president, you mean? <clears throat> Interesting. <laughs> Jesus. And he, and he, all his press conferences, they would censor. They would distort his words. Uh, by the way, I, I carried his entire um, rallies and that kind of shit in his press conferences because uh, it, I didn't want this accusation coming my way. And I think I did it quite successfully. He became boring after a while, um, I got to say. But uh, again, it, misrepresenting him. Mean, by the way, where's the, this is the whole, there's the two defenses. They took him out of context and he was being sarcastic. Neither of which are ever true. Censor, right? And he, and he, all his press conferences, they would censor, they would distort his words. They kicked How so? Give me an example. Kicked him off of Twitter. They kicked him off. Of they? They kicked him off Twitter? You know who kicked him off Twitter? Twitter. Twitter. Twitter kicked Trump off of Twitter. That's it. Federal government couldn't do that. Didn't do that. He was president when it happened. Instagram, I mean, any chance he, okay. If the government kicked Donald Trump off of Twitter, then Donald Trump, who was, according to him, king of the fucking government, because he can commit any crime he wants and have total immunity, kicked himself off of Twitter and you have no recourse because he censored himself. And said they could remove a public you know, platform for my father to use to communicate to the American people. They did. Does it surprise you that they'd have brought him back earlier, but he won't go on there because he's got a contract with his own stupid money grab fucking truth social. MSDNC is doing the same thing on, you know, New Hampshire primary night. Of course not. Does it surprise you that CNN's doing the exact same thing? Again, Sean, they're petrified of my father and his message. My <laughs> and that message would be what? Grab women by the pussy or... Um, Nikki Haley uh, probably had an affair and that they'd be going after her and, um, and that Vivek's last name is pronounced Ramaswamy. Father's one person who does not need this job. I talk about- <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Well, you know what? We don't need him in this job. So how about we call it quits? About that all the time. His life would be exponentially better if he was at Mar-a-Lago, if he's enjoying life, if he's- Oh, God damn, by the way. Ugh. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Oh. Ooh. I got it. About that all the time. His life would be exp I had to look at it. So potentially better if he was at Mar-a-Lago, if he's enjoying. <laughs> no, it wouldn't. It's not his house. It's not his home, motherfucker. It's a rental space. It's like telling us his life would be exponentially better if he lived in the top on the top floor of a fucking Ramada Inn. Enjoying life if he's enjoying his grandkids. The guy wants to save this country. Our whole family wants to save this country. For whom? Our, our republic is going down the tubes based on pure incompetence. And you just mentioned the border a second ago. I mean, if Biden was so focused on the border, why does he have federal agents going and cutting the barbed wire to allow? Because people died and because we don't use razor wire on the Mexican side of the border to stop people from entering a place that's not a military compound or something like that. Um, it's it's open territory. Second, secondly, you can't put it in fucking rivers. The slippery slope legally across the entire fucking world is ginormous. If you allow that to happen, it allows it to be spread everywhere. Secondly, we are we would be liable under international law for people who who got fucking slit to pieces or, or, or fucking got killed or drowned because they were cut by that shit. Here's the other question. And this is, this might be a big one. Work with me on this. See if you can fold this into your brain, Eric and uh, maggots, which we have a few maggots in the, in the chat. And I want to thank you for being here because time is the greatest gift you can give anybody and there's no refunds. So I appreciate you being here. It's terrific. Don't forget to like and subscribe while you're here because you're going to want to hear my argument because it's fucking fantastic. Here we go. Now, <clears throat> <clears throat> why do they need razor wire if the wall works?
I'll wait. Where, why, why would you need razor wire if the wall works? The wall works. If it's a, what the fuck is the wall for? Maybe you should have made the wall out of razor wire. I don't know. Why <laughs> am I, am I the only, does this not occur to any of these fuckheads? Also, why is the border worse after the wall was built? <coughs> Excess road. Legal immigrants into this country. I mean, why would he be doing that, right? If he cared so much about our economy, why would he have allowed inflation to hit 10%? What? Okay. All right. First of all, fucko, let us know how can, uh, if, if you're going to go, uh, inflation went up because money printer go burr, right? The idea too much money in the system gave us 10%, uh, inflation. God damn it. Okay. Who, and, and I, I I'm going to give you a hint. Who turned the money printer on primarily? in that situation. Now, don't worry cuz your dad's not responsible for inflation except if you maybe screw the pooch on uh how he handled covid and he was a bit of a fuck up. But it had nothing to do with the amount of money in circulation. The quite frankly, inflation had zero to do with how much money was in circulation. Nothing. Fucking nothing. It was all supply shock because of covid. I know these Volkerites want to tie themselves to this shit, but I have been vindicated in article after article after article in the last six months where people are like, fuck, maybe, I don't know, maybe the, maybe you can't patch a $22 trillion hole in the economy with $6 trillion. Maybe if the economy loses $18 trillion in eight months, with that money gone, maybe there's not too much money in circulation. That's, hmm, I'm gonna have to germinate on that for a while. Oy. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. I should, uh, should make a smaller one of these just to cover it. Sprank. He could have brought down gas prices, my father. He did bring down gas prices, dumbass. I had the lowest gas prices in the history of this nation. Because nobody was driving. There were fewer people on the road than at any time since cars were invented. Nobody was driving. We were all indoor. It was COVID, you fuckhead. Oh my God, I'm tired of this talking point. Jesus Christ. Oil was... At negative $35 a barrel. Of course gas was low. Now, why? Why in the fucking world would oil be so low? Was it because of Trump's genius deal he made with the Saudis and the Russians and Americans to drive the price of oil as a commodity into the absolute shitter? No, because if you listen to him talk at his rallies, he's like, we had to get the price up or it was going to collapse everything. Like, motherfucker. No, that's you prioritizing, like, oil companies over the rest of the people in the economy who were fucking stuck. Oh, God. The first thing Biden did was he put a ban on the Keystone XL pipeline. He stopped. Which is Canadian shale oil. It's not American oil. It still gets to market. It just doesn't have to cross over our aquifers to do it. Up to all drilling, he effectively did a moratorium on oil and gas. And guess what? Did he? And guess what? Hold on. I think I I think I might know the answer to this one. Hold on a second. Um, let's see. Uh, U.S. oil production. <laughs> let's see perhaps uh what do i want news i probably that's probably what i want i probably want news on us mm -hmm. 
Oh, you're not going to like this one, Eric. Eric, you're not going to like this one. Maggots, you're going to hate this one too. I'm sorry. I got to I got to do this for you. This is uh, okay. Uh ready? This is so good. Oh god. Is you're going to hate it. I don't know how to I'm just going to All right. I don't know how. I feel almost feel bad for Eric and the maggots. I really do. I okay. Wait, wait for it. Oh, this is going to be bad. It's going to suck, Eric. Here it comes. Just look at that headline. Just, just soak it, soak it in. Soak it in. Soak it in, Mr. Drill, baby drill, you dumb son of a bitch. <laughs> uh, the U.S., I'll read it out loud if you can't see it. The U.S. is breaking oil production records with fewer drilling rigs. Here's how. Commodities Corner. That's a wonderful time. Hello, kids. Welcome to Commodities Corner. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, Josephus, uh, Ginger Cookie, and, uh, I will be your expert on oil uh, drilling in today's uh, Commodities Corner. <laughs> Don't make me say that name again. I'm never going to remember you. Josephus Ginger Cookie? Where the fuck does that guy come from? Now I got to create a character for it. It's a lot of work. All right. U.S. oil production has been holding at or near record highs since October. Hmm. Topping the previous peak from 2020, even though the number of active domestic oil drilling rigs is down nearly 30% from four years ago. Also, by the way, the, the peak in 2020 was at the beginning of January. And then, of course, where do you think that went? Strength in oil prices and gains in investment and output efficiency have contributed to that climb, though analysts see a potential slowdown in output growth ahead because they don't have to drill because it's so much more efficient to just use the... Anyway. U.S. oil production has nearly tripled in the last 15 years, fueled by advances in drilling and fracking technology and investments in the, nearly, in the early 2010s. I forget who was president during the... 2010s, and I don't don't ask me who was vice president. And I'll be completely stumped due to sustained higher oil prices and favorable government policies. U.S. strategy to reduce dependence on foreign oil led to various federal and state level tax breaks and eased regulations for oil exploration and production of EMP uh, companies. The surge in production has also uh, led the U.S. to become a major oil exporter, opening up new markets for companies to sell the increased production despite limited increases in U.S. demand. That. See that part? See that part that's really fucking interesting? We're lowering our demand, so we sell more of it. So we don't use more of it, we sell more of it. That's why you want about 30% minimum commuter cars, not cross-country vehicles, not Mack trucks and all that kind of shit. We'll get there eventually as battery technology or hydrogen technology grows. But commuters who drive on the regular the same nine miles over and fucking over can use an electric car. Mm. There we go. U.S. strategy to reduce uh, dependence on foreign oil led to various federal, state, and Okay, there we already read that part. Uh, U.S. crude oil production stood at 13.2 million barrels per day as of the week ended January 5th after reaching a record 13.3 million barrels per day for the weeks of December 15th and December 22nd, according to data from the in uh, Energy Information Administration. That topped the previous record of 13.1 million barrels per day for the week ended in March 13th, 2020. Oh, oh, the highest number, the highest number that Trump ever reached has been bested yet again by sleepy Joe Biden who kicked Trump's ass while never leaving his basement like a fucking, like Matthew Broderick in war games. <laughs> that wasn't his basement. He actually had an upstairs. You get it. It's a hacker reference. Okay. Anyways. At that time, the number of active U.S. drilling rigs uh, for oil stood at 683, according to data from Baker Hughes. That number was at 499 as of the week ended January 12th, marking a 20, roughly a 27% drop. So during Biden, 
We have 27 fewer rigs running and we have higher output. That, uh, now I gotta say, um, that if, if, if Trump had figures like that, I think he'd be bragging about them. He didn't. Right. Um, let's see the, the other thing, uh, and this is, this is the other thing that's worrying them. Let's see if I bring this down here. Get back up here. What are you doing? Why does it do that sometimes? I don't understand. Um, get back up here, you silly. Um, okay. Um, yeah. Uh, U.S. oil and clean energy both boom under Biden. U.S. oil and clean energy both boom under Biden. Beg, beg Biden, boom. Jella, boom. That jella, boom. boom. Yeah. Big Biden, boom. boom. Beg, bada, bing, boom. Bada, Biden, boom. Big, bada, boom. Biden, boom. Bada, big, boom. Bada, big, boom. Boom. Bada, big, bada, boom. Bada, Biden, boom. Big, boom. Big, bada, boom. Big, Biden, boom. Yeah. So. Dan Neal, car columnist at the Wall Street Journal, acknowledges some past glitches with EVs, but uh, then offers an update to Trump's claims. People who actually drive one of the new models, Neal writes, are finding it quicker, quieter, and more refined and responsive, more efficient, more connected, and cheaper to operate than its gas-powered equivalent. After a few miles in an EV, going back to internal combustion feels like returning to whale oil lamps. <laughs> it does. It's a little crazy. Also, uh, yeah, bag, bad, then boom. Um, also, I'd like to say for the record, and where the fuck did my other guy get back up here, you silly? Okay, bink, there we go. Um, um, for the record, where is this? Hold on, there you go. Um, <laughs> um, uh, this, uh, this dipshit does not know what he's talking about at all, which I've just proven through, just through materials. And by the way, shit that's not even coming from like the Biden administration or a government uh, source. The fucking Wall Street Journal is owned by Rupert Murdoch. Believe me, if the, if the economics were favorable to Trump, they'd be touting them. But inflation shot through the roof. No, it didn't. It, uh, it responded to supply shock, shithead, because we were all in COVID. That's like saying uh, unemployment shot down through the roof and went into the basement. And inflation was was massively outpacing wage growth in the was was wait a minute because inflation is a permanent state. You must be talking about um, supply shock and uh, the cost of goods, a supply demand issue that resulted in disinflation later. Hmm. Well, I mean, you would be referencing that if you were smart enough to even understand the fucking concept. This country, which was cramming down. Also, while you're at it, why don't you tell us how fucking awesome Javier Mille is again? I think what is uh, Argentina is like 211% inflation right now. The ordinary people in this country was making their lives exponentially harder. If you cared about the economy. <laughs> COVID did that. Coming out of COVID did that. If Biden hadn't go, like cleaned up your dad's fucking backseat attitude, fucking limo attitude towards handling the pandemic, now nah, we'll just get fucking the uh, pharmacy companies and we'll go into the parking lots of Walmart and army guys will be giving shots to people. It's going to be fucking magic. It, like they'll handle it. I'm going to be golfing, right? If he didn't have to clean that shit up, We'd have gotten to a lot of this stuff a lot earlier. Why would he have done that? It's reckless. This guy's policies are reckless. It's driving our country into the ground. Infrastructure is reckless. Is that why your dad, that must have been why your dad didn't do it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is that, is that, is that the Trump argument? Um, investments in infrastructure are reckless. That's why it was, it was always infrastructure week. We're not perceived as strong anywhere in the world. I mean, 
Well, I'm. I would argue the Houthis are a little nervous right now, and uh, Russia hasn't won. You know, they've been fighting a country that's that big compared to them, and uh, they're getting their ass handed to them. They lost. They lost almost four hundred thousand people trying to take a, a chunk of Ukraine they had tacit control over already. And literally, other countries around the world, we have properties in some of these countries. <laughs> and they laugh at you when you show up, and so you think they're laughing at Americans because when you show up, they're like, there's Eric. Oh, my God. Don't show him the meme. They're laughing at us. They're <laughs> yes, they. I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it, Eric. When you show up at your properties in other country, there are people in those countries laughing at you. I Yes, that's... <laughs> okay, I'll take your word for that. They're laughing at the United States of America. You have a Zelensky last week that literally went to Switzerland to try and negotiate peace. Wasn't that always America's place in the world? You go to America to negotiate peace. You don't go to Switzerland. You don't go to... <laughs> why would you have... Why would they go to America to negotiate peace? What are you talking about? You, you mean like the, the Israelis and the Palestinians? What are you talking about? He called... He went to Switzerland to call their bluff. France, you don't go to these other countries? Yeah, fucking France. Who goes to fucking France? Except the United States during the Revolutionary War, and we wouldn't exist if, uh, if Ben Franklin hadn't uh, joined a Freemason lodge in Paris. You know, you true story. Come to America. Why the fuck do you think there's a Lafayette in every state you're in? No, but we don't have that standing in the world anymore. We're losing. Yeah, we do. Who, whose fucking navy do you think is doing these strikes, dum dum? Our currency. We're losing our culture. We're losing. Whoa, 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 whoa. America, what? but we don't have that standing in the world anymore. We're losing our currency. Okay, first of all, one of the reasons why uh, there's 211% uh, um, in, uh, inflation in Argentina is because they're now switching to the dollar. We're not losing our currency. What are you fucking kidding me? Why? Here's the thing. I know this is a gish gallop and it's Sean Hannity show, but fucking stop him and make him... Even if you think he knows what the fuck he's talking about, stop him and go, what do you mean by that? What, is it, what do you mean losing our currency? Just let do a breakout session. It's not enough to just fucking toss these little fucking things in the air and act like, I don't know, I don't know what the fucking, that was there when I got here. Like, Jesus Christ, this guy ta like throws out talking points like he's chucking a bag of weed out his fucking window when, a car, when the cop pulls you over. Own it. Explain it. We're losing our culture. We're losing our freedoms. We're losing our constitution. We're, lo <laughs> we're losing our, our pets. Heads are falling off. <laughs> Where'd you put, who? Where's the constitution? Who has the constitution? Who had it? Fuck me. I think it's around here somewhere. He's right. It's gone. I, I, I went and checked. I and I fucking, I ran all the way. It's gone. I don't know who. Does anybody have eyes on Nick Cage? Fucking dickhead. Who's in God in society? We're losing. <laughs> We're what? Freedoms. We're losing our constitution. We're losing God in society. We're losing God in society. Because your pussy-grabbing father, who never saw a church he didn't want to laugh at until he needed the evangelical vote, or he wanted fucking AI pictures of Jesus putting him in a fucking headlock in the Oval Office, lost to a Catholic that goes to Mass every Sunday. Fucking, when these, I swear to God, these dumb motherfuckers are going to see Joe Biden on Ash Wednesday and go, he doesn't even know he's got stuff on his fucking face. Who's, nobody even tells him this is this country's falling apart.
We're losing it all because we have an incompetent human being in the White House, and we let need ask you last... strength again. And my father... again, um, let me ask you this: How uh, how did an incompetent guy like that get a infrastructure bill passed, and uh, the Chips Act passed, and act actually, you know, had agreed to you know sign a version of the immigration bill that would have gone through too if it wasn't for your dad running interference for it? It wasn't. Why wasn't your dad able to do? infrastructure at all father will do an unbelievable job he, he will get yes you're right i do not believe he will even do the job get this ship back on track in about two seconds flat yeah that's how you capsize a ship i mean it's a <clears throat> speed boats you can jerk left and right but you know a ship you gotta slow and steady let me ask you this, and I've talked to a lot. Can you kick my ass? A lot of people today, and uh, Nikki Haley's not even competing in Nevada. Nevada, I'm, I'm not really sure why. Because it's another caucus run by the party. She's looking at primary votes, and if she knows she's going to lose, she's better with her money spent in South Carolina. Did you even fucking see how Biden won? Were you even paying attention? Of course not. Uh, I, apparently, I guess she didn't file the right paperwork. Something happened. I'm not sure. But then the next state that they will compete in is her home state of South Carolina. Currently, the Real Clear Politics average has your data up by 30 points. Um, is it even really worth your dad's time to? In, to in When's the last Real Clear Politics thing? Was it before or after New Hampshire? And and when when uh. What's his name was still in the race when DeSantis, you see, I don't even, even care anymore. Engage DeSantis. in that part of the primary uh, and maybe it's time to pivot and really go after Joe Biden. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I don't even know why he's kicking her ass. I think he should just blow off the rest of the primary and not go to any of these fucking states. Yeah, that's a great idea. I mean, he doesn't have to. He's obvious. Look at the polls. He's winning like crazy. He doesn't have to go. Jesus Christ. He didn't have to do fucking 17 Iowa gaggles and go to these like little fucking Quonset Hut offices and blather for hours at a time. He didn't have to do that. He just wanted to do that. I mean, where's he going to be? Court? Um, well, listen, I think you can do both at the same time. And I thought it was funny. I was standing right behind my father last night and she mentioned so he wouldn't fall backward competency yet she lost by what 30 points in in the first she came in third in in, in iowa she lost decisively last night in in new hampshire mm, but she's moving up nice tongue jut jesus christ you window licker <laughs> she filed the wrong paperwork so she's not gonna be on the ballot next week so my father's gonna go running away with nevada and then he's gonna go beat her in her home state of south carolina by a lot and i don't think there's a single elected official in the state who's actually endorsed her, which tells you probably everything you need. That's because he's making the argument that he broomed her out of the way so he could put people more favorable to him in the state government in South Carolina because of the fuck it. Like, look, and I don't think even people recognize this. South Carolina and Arizona are big fucking money states with not with uh, with populations that are not comparable to that amount. Like so Texas and California, New York make a lot of money big money states, but they have a lot of people at the same time. South Carolina and Arizona don't. Their populations are relatively small. But in the case of South Carolina, there's like uh, defense contractors, chemical companies, pharmaceutical companies, huge money, and very few workers doing those jobs. The same thing is true of like the the tech manufacturing, the the, the fabs where they're making all the chips in, in uh, Arizona. Not a lot of people in that fucking state compared to California or Texas, obviously in the bigger states. But a lot of money. It's like it's like a it's like a state that's all Cupertino in California with none of the baggage of the other big cities. That's why there's such a fucking power struggle to control South Carolina or to control Arizona. That's why it matters so much. Like there's some states where you're like, what the fuck? And and the reason you say that is because a couple weeks after you hear about some story from Wyoming or South Dakota or something that unless it has to do with a NORAD site or some shit like that. You're not gonna you're not gonna really hear about those states because they don't really have an impact on the on uh, on the general economic picture of the country, right? They they just don't. South Carolina does, and and Trump and his people recognized that when they were in office. And one of the reasons he says he brought her in so they because he liked the the um, you know 
I don't know, her lieutenant governor, and he wanted him to take over the role and why they were trying to control that. Because that's, they want, the Republicans want control over those industries and they want connections to those people. And he wants to, you know, because you don't have a lot of workers. It's not, you're like, you're, you're not building Ramadas there. You're building W's. You're building the kind of hotels that like rich people buy these chemicals or buy these things from all over the world want to come and stay at. That's, that's what they want to be in bed with. That's why he gave a shit. Yeah, hold on one second. I'll show uh, like. I'm sorry if I can type. Um, here we go. Here we go. Let's try this guy right here. Here you go. <clears throat> Tourism is a major issue. That's true. Okay, agriculture. We know that. Tourism, automotive. Uh, aerospace, and this is, and by the way, aerospace is effectively all the, the DOD stuff because uh, I think there's a big Boeing plant down there. Yeah, aerospace is one of the most vibrant industries in South Carolina, having an economic impact valued at 19 billion over the years. The aerospace industry has evolved to become one of the key pillars of South Carolina's economy. 2009, Boeing chose the site. Yeah, that's so that's where Boeing's been this entire time. Um, and I'm gonna hold on, I'll look at the chemical plants too. I don't know why they're not. This is just World Atlas, so I don't know how like up to date this is. Uh, and I have a BMW, a lot of car things, tourism, blah, blah, blah. And then agriculture, um, diversified, heavy mechanized uh, uh, greenhouse nurseries, turkeys, broilers, corn, cotton, soybeans, wheat, eggs, cattle. Currently, there are about 25,000 farms in South Carolina, which cover an area of 4.9 million acres. As of 2018, uh, investments in agribusiness firms stood at 480. $5 million and 9.1% of the economic output of the state was attributed to agribusiness. Now, hold on one second. Then we'll go to, it's again, not a, not a super high populated population state. And then, uh, sorry. Uh, mm -hmm. There you go. Hold on. Let's get out of the fuck out of here. <clears throat> okay. Top chemical manufacturing companies in South Carolina. BASF. They're in South Carolina. They got 10,000 plus global employees. And this is their, this is their hub. BASF is, uh, um, as their primary hub. Echolab, Solvay, Diversi, Airgas, Ingevity, Mitsubishi's chemical plant, right? Is there? Yeah. Um, Fujifilm, Simrise, DSM Fermanich, Fermanich. These are big fucking companies and they're all in and they've got, let's see, where's the, and these are, oh, this is a job listing site, I think. Yeah. Best places to work 2024. Yeah. There you go. Yes. BASF is British, but this is their hub in the States. Um, they're hiring a thousand people. They got a thousand jobs there. Uh, 1.2 thousand jobs there. 47 jobs in this Solvay. Chemical manufacturer, 5,001 to 10,000 employees. So they created in 1860. Yeah, okay. So anyways, this is their plant in South Carolina. Um, they're their facility there. And it might just be mostly sales, but also fabrication. Like this is, this is uh, like low cost, high yield business. That's why it, that's why it mattered to him. Yeah. Just kind of catching you up on that. Same thing is true if you look at like the 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 chip manufacturing facilities in Arizona. Holy shit. Like nine billion dollars in investment. Yeah. To know about the actual person. So I think my father can do both. I mean, he's clearly gonna win Nevada. He's clearly gonna win South Carolina, and I think he's gonna win every single state on Super Tuesday. In fact, it's upsetting to me, Sean, because at this point I, I truly believe that she's just in the race to be a spoiler. And <laughs> I guess, uh, tough shit. And when you see the majority of her donors, uh, boo fuckity who welcome to the world of Democrats. We have to deal with this shit all the time. Are, are democratic operatives or frankly, rhinos. I mean, uh, I <laughs> those are, by the way, um, hold on. Frankly, rhinos. The, yeah, those are Republicans, asshole. They're not our problem. Look at the same person who's one of our largest donors is the very guy who's funding many of the lawsuits against my father right now. So many. Well, uh, is there something about this dude? Maybe he's just into supporting women. Maybe that's the dig. He thinks he has to stay in New York and fight every single day. Reed Hoffman. 
Mm, he doesn't have to stay there. Does that surprise anybody? Does it surprise any? Uh, what surprises me is that you don't just settle and fuck off and why he can't keep his mouth shut about this particular woman just let it slide if he doesn't think it's going to have an amp impact anyways. Right? Anybody that 70% of the people who voted for Nikki Haley yesterday were not Republicans? Who is a little... Oh, we got, we got lip spittle. Ah, oh, fuck me. Sorry to do this to you guys. Not good. Always be on the lookout. Whenever you're going to speak on television or for any length of time, you want to uh, avoid diuretics and you want to you want to drink plenty of water an hour before taking a like taking a sip in the middle of it is not going to solve it. Just going to make the fucker bounce around your face. We've all watched it happen. It, you know how they talk about how like, oh my God, it was a train wreck. The whole thing was a train wreck. Um, and, and the idea being is that, interestingly enough, a train wreck is terrible and you can't take your eyes off of it. These are the two kind of primary uh, reasons why we use that train wrecks as an analogy. And I would argue that a dog taking a shit satisfies both of those things because it's weirdly, you watch everybody's eyes when a dog starts taking a shit. Like they can't take their eyes off. It's hilarious. But the same thing is true of a bouncy piece of spittle making its way across someone's lip. Do you ever watch somebody just go like that? Now it's on the top lip. Now it's on the bottom lip. Oh, it's worked its way into the corners. Oh, it's got a friend. <laughs> right? It's the stuff of nightmares. They were Democrats and some independents. I mean, Sean, at this point, I, I tr fucking independents. Am I right? Fuck those people. Jesus. I truly believe she's in she's being paid or something to be in the race as a pure spoiler. And the you know, the, the party should not put up with that. You know, we need to focus our guns. Oh, Joe you're gonna focus your guns. Um the party shouldn't have to put up with what? Other people running? Hey, we have to. And and our people have even less of a shot, motherfucker. She got within striking distance. Dean Phillips and Marianne Williamson aren't coming anywhere near the White House. Ever. And they, we're not drumming them out. We're just going, fuck you. you they are running as spoilers. She has, to win. She, she has to win for, for her to be competitive. And, and so far, that's not going to happen. And, you know, if she can overcome. A By the way, I don't, I don't know if this is the case. And this is, uh, this is a good question. Because I don't give a shit about Republican caucuses and this stuff. Because I've never been in the fight trying to get anybody across the finish line about it. Do we know if there's uh, if they're all winner take all? I can't imagine they would be right because I I'm, it's a it's a curious it's a curious thing. Hold on, or uh, let's see. Okay. This is okay. Here we go. This is the this is the delegate thing or whatever. I don't know why this is fucking stretched out like this. It makes no sense to me. Okay, allocation rules by state, twenty twenty four. So, um, okay, you need uh, um, gray is the convention. They go. They give theirs to how whoever goes to the convention. So you don't have to actually go. To these three states because they just give them to you whoever yeah, whoever the fuck right it's too many people uh, sorry there's too few people too much land we don't want to fucking get on our horse back in the day and travel all the way across the fucking state to the one city so that we can fucking clap for some dickhead and then ride all the way back this is whoever uh the rest of these are proportional the light green that's not a lot it's uh kentucky Virginia, uh, uh, Minnesota, yeah, um, and, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, and then, it's hard to tell, it's like light green from regular green, oh yeah, this, the, these are the hybrid ones, the striped ones are hybrid, meaning you need a certain amount, and then you win a plurality, 
And then the dark green are winner take all. Gotcha. Okay. So that's why Iowa and New Hampshire and everybody jumps in there because you want to you want to start bagging those fucking things right away. Um, that's interesting too. Is that uh, I guess the different counties in South Carolina are uh, yeah are are hybrid with a WTA trigger. Okay, so the, oh the striped ones are with a trigger, and then but the the these guys are for, for, oh, whatever. Okay, fucking. 550, 516 of the votes come from the states like South Carolina. Um, proportional state will proportionally allocate delegates based on the statewide thing. That's the light green. Proportional with a trigger. Uh, state will follow the above proportional rules, but allow for a winner-take-all allocation to the candidate wins a majority or more of the, uh, of the vote statewide and or the congressional district level. Hybrid states is a category follow form of winner-take-most plan. Include states with winner-take-all by congressional district methods. Uh, and then winner take all, obviously. Okay. So they're all over the place. Wow. Something I didn't need to know and don't really care about. 30 now. point deficit in South Carolina. Uh, that would shock me. Uh, your dad has the current governor, the sitting governor, two sitting senators. <laughs> right. For business purposes. Most of the congressional delegation. Anybody who golfs. And like I read somewhere a total of a, about 150 statewide. I don't know, but I, uh, Sean, you're giving off the, the kind of, I'm, I'm, what I'm getting from you is that in your estimation, the people of South Carolina elected Nikki Haley as a woman of color just for show and that they don't actually think their leaders are meant for the national stage. Is that, is that where you're going with this? I, hmm Officials that are endorsing him. Uh, Eric Trump, great to have you back, sir. Thank and you. We appreciate it. Just don't like her. What conservatives just don't like her. Uh, Eric Trump, great to have you back, sir. Thank and you. We appreciate it. just don't like her. Well, because she's a woman, you mean? Or <laughs> uh, We appreciate you being with us. Thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity. Also, define conservative. I, whatever. Anyways, like, it's so aggravating. Like, the, like, him in general, just what a fucking bore.